Well, welcome to this broadcast of Focus on Faith. So glad you tuned in today. This is a wonderful day to be uh, in tune with the Lord. We got uh, an excellent uh, uh, itinerant uh, pastor or evangelist going through our, our area, and I was able to Shanghai him into coming in and talking to us a little bit about some of the things that he's, he's doing, but also some of the things that are happening in the church today. If you're interested in uh, what's happening in the church today, stay tuned, get a pencil and paper. There may be some information that you may want to call us right here at uh, Radiant Light Broadcasting in Richland, Washington. And we're, our number is 943-9919. And you can reach us uh, just about any time of the day. Uh, we're here to serve you and to help you understand and to grow in the love and admonition of the Lord. Uh, I'd like you to visit with me with Eric Fish. Thank you, Eric, for coming and being with us. Good to guy. be here, Dick. You got a good grip, brother. That's what I like about you, young guys. You got strength. <laughs> Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself. People, you know, haven't heard maybe the name Fish, and so maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into a little bit of questioning on the ministry that you're in. Sure. Well, it's good to be here in Eastern Washington and be here with you. And uh, yeah, well, I am passionate about Jesus, and I think that. Uh, one of my greatest fears in life before I became a follower of Jesus was that if I were to follow Jesus, I thought that was equated with a life of boredom. <laughs> and I have been pleasantly surprised that the opposite is true, that uh, really following Jesus is an adventure that is fulfilling at the deepest levels of, of our hearts and our particular um, desires for life. And so I'm passionate about Jesus and helping others to discover Jesus for themselves and follow Him with their family and friends. So I travel the country. I'm, uh, I'm uh, married. I have four children, and uh, we travel mostly America, a little bit overseas, but we've been in, uh, uh, I think, 41 states in the last 18 months helping uh, plant communities that are experiencing, discovering and experiencing Jesus together and, and learning to uh, follow Him uh, with, uh, with their closest groups of friends and family. Hmm. Do they participate in the services when you, wherever you go? Yeah, well, I don't start services. I, um, I help people uh, form their own groups, uh, mostly among people who probably wouldn't ever walk into a conventional church uh -huh, service. Uh -huh. um, I find that increasingly in North America, uh, growing numbers of people are maybe averse to um, traditional ways of doing church, but I find that they're very hungry and eager um, uh, and open to Jesus. And so I've found that sometimes a really effective way of reaching people is not inviting them into a service, but helping them start a group where people can interact over meals and drinks to discuss and discover the person of Jesus for themselves and then let that group actually grow into a group of Jesus followers who are breaking bread together, worshiping together, praying together, reading God's Word, and um, enacting Jesus' teachings in their own life and in their own relationships. And essentially what that becomes is kind of a simple or seed form of church for people that otherwise might not have ever had the chance to experience church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you see? What do you see actually uh, moving people toward Jesus now? In you know, in uh, in and, and by my hair, you can tell I'm a little bit older than uh, than you are. Uh, when we were when we were growing uh, in the church, uh, our services uh, we had a lot of worship time. What, uh -huh. what we called worship yeah. time at that time was singing. You know, yeah. we used to have sing inspirations and we used to get together and sing a lot. You know, yeah. sometimes we'd even sing around the uh, the altar as a as a church. Yeah. And it would take some, maybe up to an hour, an hour and a half. And recently, in, in the church that I attend now, I uh, noticed that. And one of the people said, is that all you people do is sing? So our pastor decided that he was going to change it a little bit. So he's cut, he's cut our worship time down to, like, say, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, when you say uh, the, the, a simple format of church, mm -hmm. do you see that as a changing format in the, in the way we the way we project uh, a service or project uh, yeah. Jesus? Yeah. Well, I don't even know if that's a fair question. I, yeah. I, I talked all around the subject, but maybe... No, I, that's yeah. a good question. Yeah. I, uh, you know, when you know Jesus, you, you come to know God as Father. Jesus is the one who introdu introduces us to relationship with our Father in Heaven. So God becomes like our Daddy. And God is such a good Dad that he wants to be with us and show up with us no matter what style of gathering mm. we create. Yeah. But I find that there are you know, different w ways we can create gatherings 
that help people feel more comfortable interacting with God. And, you know, worship will always be a way that we connect with God. Um, not just singing the songs, but connecting our hearts and spirits and emotions and minds to the, like, how good God is. And singing is a form of worship. Um, in the simple churches that I start, worship is essential. But I would say that there is one other key thing that I've seen make simple churches a really effective, healthy way to um, create a group or grow a group. And it's what I call interaction. Hmm. Um, because if we start a church service, if you think about it, most of the format is there's a stage up here and yeah. there's going to be a band and they're going to perform or lead others in worship, but it's still on a stage. And then there are announcements and then there is a speaker who speaks to us for 30 to 45 minutes. And so the action is happening on the stage, but in the audience, it's maybe a little bit of participation, but it's mostly observation, passive observation. In a simple church, picture uh, 12 people who are really getting to know each other well, who are successively uh, moving towards Jesus together. Some of them become Christ followers, but they're getting in a rhythm of gathering together over a meal to do um, three practices. Word, read some of God's Word and interact with the stories together. Worship, do a, do a little worship. If we don't know songs, we can go around the room and say, uh, God, I'm thankful that you are, and then each person says a word to God. And it's a form of worship that someone can do whether or not they've ever heard a Christian song in their life. And the third aspect is fellowship. And that's where we share a meal, we remember Jesus together over a meal and drink, and we share in the joys and challenges of our week together. So what I, what I say is such a key component of these simple churches is interaction. Whereas in a conventional church, it's mostly information-centered, mm -hmm. where people are passive recipients of information, yes. watching a, yes. sh um, a, a stage-driven you know, performance yeah. or message. Yeah. Yeah. In a simple church, people are interacting um, in the stories of each other's week, each other's lives. We're looking at stories from Jesus to say, how does this speak to your heart? What is God showing you? And there's a lot of interaction taking place. And what I find is that does two things. One, it makes the group really bonded with each other because they really get to know each other and learn the story of each other's lives. And the second thing it does is it um, facilitates reproducibility. Mm. Because when a group forms like this, they discover the joys of following Jesus in an interactive group that's done in such a way as they go, I could do this. I don't have to prepare a 45-minute sermon. I can just read some scripture and interact, interact with people discuss, on how people are, yeah. what people are discovering about God and right, Jesus in their life. Right, in this. right, right, right. That's excellent. That's excellent. Do you have some examples of that that you? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so, in the place I first got started um, in in growing simple church communities is. Uh, my background was um, growing campus ministries, and I was part of a, a local church that was really successful, did really well, bought a building. It was one of the largest, fastest growing churches in our city. But right as we began to grow, uh, uh, I noticed something, that w the larger we got, the more we drew Christians from other ministries who became part of our, our group, and the less I saw uh, really what I call freaky pagans. And I mean that in a loving way, because Jesus loved sinners. He right. loved hanging out with sinners. He loved hanging out with pagans. Right. And I love being around them too. Right. Jesus was just as comfortable at a party as he was at the temple. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. today I'm, I'm passionate about helping people um, bring Jesus into parties yeah. rather than just try to bring people from yeah. the parties into church. Yeah, you know, you know, as you said that, that was interesting. It quickened something in my... Mm -hmm. uh, in my own life, and I, I'll just make it brief because I want you to really tell, the story, tell your side yeah, of the yeah, story. But yeah. uh, I was working in a foreign country uh, many years ago, well, a few years ago, and uh, one of the, my wife was with us, and we had a house, and it was a rather, it was rather a comfortable house for the, the country that I was in. It was a communist country at Taboot. And uh, this, this little village that we lived in, there was probably, oh, maybe five or 6,000 people and uh, they had had a real t difficult time during the Second World War with, with uh, you know, with occupation and, and with things that went on. But they didn't have a church there, and, and this, uh, 
so my wife and I started, we were, we were leaders here in our church here before we went to, to Europe. And while we were, uh, while we were there, we, we started a small group. But we did it among the uh, people that were working for me. I had uh, something like 120 families of Americans and English and German yeah. working for me. And, and out of that, there, were, there was a, you know, a, a fraction of them that were Christians and they wanted to get together. And I, I kind of let it, well, this one night uh, I invited the, uh, the, uh, a, a, a superintendent of one of the large denominations there in this country, a Christian denomination, to come and, and teach. And uh, he was a graduate of Fuller, by the way. And uh, he, uh, he started out, and there was probably 15 or 20 of these mm -hmm. uh, local people there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any of my own people there, just, just, mm -hmm. just the local people. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, one of the guys pulls out a cigarette, and he starts to smoke, and I said, oh, no, now what am I going to do? Well, it didn't bother the teacher at all because he was used to this. He was a native, you know, himself. Yeah. And pretty soon somebody else pulled out a cigarette and another person wanted a little drink of wine because it, it was a, that, that kind of a culture. And before I knew it, I, we were having a, 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 a feast around the wow. word, but also a feast around that. And there was wow. a blue haze in my in my uh, living room. Wow. I had to open the windows because there was so much smoke in there. <laughs> didn't bother them. But you know, yep, the, didn't bother them at all. But it's you just, know, yeah. uh, Eric, as a result, now I just, this has been over almost 35 years ago. Yeah. They have a church in that, that town. Wow. It's a, uh, it's a fundamental Pentecostal type church. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was started by that young couple that came there. Wow. And, uh, and, and it was just one of these things. It was very wow. simple. Started in your living room. Yeah. And we didn't With sing cigarettes any, and wine. Right. <laughs> and Jesus. We, we didn't even <laughs> sing any songs. We didn't even sing any songs. Wow. Yeah, I get knocked the rock for that. Yeah. I'd love good testimony. <laughs> yeah, well, you brought okay, to a so, good story, another so, story to mind. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Well, um, I got my start uh, planting more simple forms of church. I didn't even call it church planting. It was more like I, I wanted to bring, I wanted to see people experience Jesus who probably wouldn't come to my what I thought of as church. Sure. And one of the first places where I, I, I discovered a real need was on a Native American campus. Uh, it was a university that was all Native Americans in my, in my hometown in the Midwest. And I thought, you know, I, regular church is probably not going to be the best way to uh, bring Jesus to these people. And so I started being mentored by some overseas missionaries who were, who were telling me things like, don't start a ministry, just go make disciples. Ah. And so... Um, I started walking the campus, praying, and looking for people to have conversations about Jesus. And pretty soon I found a few people who weren't believers, but they were really open to Jesus. And a couple of them became followers of Jesus. So we started um, a few different groups where people would gather together to share a meal or snacks and to discover Jesus together. And then in those groups, more people would start following Jesus. And then we would baptize them. And then we would pray for them to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then we would teach them to share the story of what's happening with their friends. And so more and more people started hearing the gospel. Here's, here's one of the stories from that. Um, uh, you know, this story just popped in my mind. I wasn't going to share it, but uh, it comes to my mind. One night, um, there, uh, I, I started this simple church with uh, a guy who I was discipling. And uh, it had grown for a few weeks. And there were about 18 people who were gathering every week to share a meal to discuss a story about Jesus, and then soon a couple of them got baptized and they became followers of Jesus. And there was one man in there, a young man uh, who grew up in Alaska, and he was really bitter against Christianity. He'd had some bad experiences with the church, like probably a number of us in our viewing audience had. I had a number of bad experiences of too. Course, so. Of course, of course. But, um, but I found that Jesus is great at healing some of those church wounds we have. <laughs> and. Uh, um, anyway, this young man, one night, um, he had not become a follower of Jesus yet, and one night he brings a pornographic magazine to the food table where we were sharing a meal, and really we were teaching people that we're remembering this, we're having this meal and drinks to honor and remember Jesus. We didn't say, this is communion, but no. we were giving them this practice of remembering yeah. Jesus over meals. So he brings this pornographic magazine. The young man who I had led to the Lord and was discipling, he gets really angry and he comes to me and he says, we're going to kick this guy out of this group. He can't ever come back. I can't believe how offensive this is. And I stop 
and I'm like, oh my goodness, what am well, I going to do? do now? This is <laughs> so wrong what this guy's done. And, and then I, I, I thought for a second and I felt like God gave me a, a, a piece of wisdom or a word of wisdom. And I said, you know what I think's happening? This guy, don't kick him out. He's really close to getting saved and becoming a follower of Jesus. He's just really bitter at Christianity. And so this is his last attempt to do something to try to get us to reject him. And so I pulled, wow. the, I pulled this guy aside and I said, hey, listen, man, it's hard for people to focus on Jesus when you have the pornographic magazines at the table. Can you leave those in your room? This group is devoted to just really giving a safe place for people to discover Jesus. Can you leave your pornographic magazines at home and not bring them? He goes, yeah, okay, sorry, man. Two weeks later, he became a follower of Jesus. And uh, another group we started, uh, started right in a dorm where there had been a lot of sexual immorality. One guy had impregnated five different women one year. Um, you could smell incense burning from people trying to cleanse their room from demonic spirits because they were having lots of nightmares and attributing them to demons and things. And so I had a guy that I mentored in this Starting Simple Churches. He went in to start one among this group himself. He got a box of donuts, a jug of milk, and printed out a story about Jesus on pieces of computer paper. He goes into the dorm, starts building friendships, and says, I want to start a group to eat meals and discuss stories about Jesus and just see if it encourages people. There's no right or wrong answers. A few people sit down and start discussing the stories. After a few weeks, this guy walks in who is uh, a very traditional native-looking guy. And, you know, Christianity was n not com across the board, but for the most part was really, uh, you know, uh, people were averse to Christianity yeah, in this yeah. place. It was an offense. It, it was, was an it, offense, yeah. yeah, it yeah. Was an offense, and uh, it, which was interesting because sometimes natives would say, are you a Christian? <laughs> yeah. And I would say, well, that depends. <laughs> yeah, right. What do you mean by that? Yes, yes. And if they would go, well, are you a liar, a treaty breaker? Are you imposing your culture on me? I'd go, oh, no, 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 I'm not that. But I am a follower of Jesus. That stops, right? So, yeah. But anyway, so this uh, young man that I was mentoring goes in to start this simple church. And after a few weeks of these discussions going, um, this young man comes into the edge of the lobby and is watching them with suspicion. And uh, so they see him and invite him uh, to uh, join the group. And he says, is this like a God thing? And they're like, well, we're discussing stories about Jesus and sharing some food. Please sit down with us. And he goes, okay, I think I need this. So he sits down with them and they discuss this story about Jesus. Now keep in mind what's happening here is that a new believer, a young disciple, is simply sharing food and gathering a group to have a discussion where people are becoming centered on discovering Jesus over a meal together. That's a habit that's reproducible. Gathering uh, over meals that yeah. as a group starts to become a group of Jesus followers, it's now already a baby church because they're disciples, following Jesus together, committed to each other, to pray, to read God's Word, and to gather regularly over meals together. So this young man discusses the Jesus story, the story about Jesus, and he says, hey, can I share something with you? And my friend says, yes, of course. He goes, well, back in my tribe, we don't do Christianity. Christianity to us is a bad word because Christianity lied to us, stole our land, broke treaties, and decimated our families. But here's the reason I'm here. Because last night I had a dream, and in my dream I was back with my tribe, and we were dressed in our native regalia, and we were dancing around the fire, worshiping the Great Spirit. But as we danced, a stranger appeared among us. He was dancing with our people, dressed like our people, but as I looked closely at him, I realized that he was pointing fingers and mocking us and making fun of us. And as I, when I looked at his face, I realized he was Satan dressed up like my people, making mm. fun of us. I woke up from the dream, and I felt like God sent me that dream, but I don't know what it means. Then I see you guys talking about God here, and I thought I would just sit down and participate. Now, this is a native, fully this Native American. This is a fully American. Native American man. Yeah. So the, the person who I was mentoring, who went to start this simple church, says, well, I can interpret your dream. God has sent you a message that he's called you to be a deliverer for your people, to rescue them from the power of Satan and to deliver them into the kingdom of Jesus. Have you ever heard the story of Jesus? This young man says, no, I never have. 
And it's interesting to me because I think a lot of us have heard about Christianity or been exposed to what we call Christianity, the forms, the rituals, the buildings, the performance. Right. But I think more people would benefit if we really had the chance, if they really had the chance to experience Jesus um, facilitated through a, a meaningful relationship around them. And so this uh, person shared the gospel with him, the story of how Jesus came, and he, he was God's messenger, and he loved unlike anyone had ever loved, and he cast out demons, and he, he raised from the dead. And then he taught his followers, he gave power to his followers to spread his message that would one day go all around the world and restore all the tribes and families of the world into relationship with the Creator God and relationship with each yeah, other. The spirit of reconciliation. Yes. Yeah. And so this young man looks and goes, hmm. Jesus is doing that? Can I join him? He became, have you ever had someone beg you, can no. I become a follower of Jesus? <laughs> no. This guy becomes a follower of Jesus that night. Wow. Short time later, goes out, gets baptized in a local lake with three carloads of people, most of whom weren't, many of whom weren't following Jesus yet. And this, the story of what happened to this guy spread around that entire residence hall of people where there had been sexual um, predators, where there had been nightmares and demonic spirits. The testimony of Jesus changing lives spread throughout that entire dorm. And it wasn't just about now, this, this, was cool on a, this was on Native a, American reservation campus. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. And it wasn't just about the cool dream and supernatural story. This community formed that was really learning to love God, yeah. love each other, and love the lost. A yeah. short time later, a young man comes in and becomes part of their community, started following Jesus, and his shoes were falling off his feet. So they collected money and bought the guy's shoes because they were learning about how Jesus teaches to give. So everywhere he went around the dorm, he would say, my Jesus family bought me these shoes. And it was kind of like this rumor started going around that if you're part of this Jesus community, people will share with you and you won't have any needs. Yeah. And that yeah. to me is a great picture of Jesus wow. coming to encounter people right where they live. And that's, that's, a, that's an excellent uh, presentation of, of the process that you do to, to, to form uh, what you call a simple church. Yeah. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it a small group. You can call it a house church. You can call it, but it, it's still all the same thing. It's a small group of people getting together in fellowship around the word. That's what we used to call it in, nice. when I was growing up. Fellowshipping around the word. And fellowshipping around a meal is always so important because it, it, it takes away that, uh, that yours and mine attitude when you're sitting there yeah. sharing from the same bowl of food. That's a great observation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing how much Jesus ate with people. And yes. he chose a meal with his yeah. closest friends yeah. to inaugurate the tradition yeah. of what we call communion. And I think one of the things Jesus is doing is restoring the simplicity, but also the power of gathering around meals with our closest friends yeah. to honor and remember yeah. Jesus yeah. together. We're almost at the end of our, our, our time, uh, Eric, but uh, I want you to take the last few minutes. Of, there, there's people out there that might be saying, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like to do this, but... Yeah. I, I don't have the I don't have the education. I don't have the training. Yeah. How, walk us through yeah. in the remaining minutes that we yeah. have of how well, you go about yeah. this. Well, first I'll tell you uh, some great resources are on my website, mm -hmm. ericfish.com, e r i k f i s h.com. Um, I have some great free resources for people to um, to move from. I want to reach my friends for Jesus, but I don't know how to start. Um, and also resources on how, how can I start a simple church. Um, but the process basically looks like this. Um, identify a group of people who you really sense God's compassion for, people who need Jesus. I prefer not to start with Christians. Um, I prefer that people start with people who maybe wouldn't go to a conventional church probably. Plant, start praying for them. Make a list and start praying for them. Great groups start out of praying for the lost. And uh, the next thing is engage them in conversation, invite them to share a meal, to read a story about Jesus and talk about it over a meal. And then I've got some resources on my website. A great place to start are some of the parables or some of the miracles in the book of John. Yes. You simply uh, read through the story out loud together and then ask a few questions. They're, affirm that there are no right or wrong answers. This is just a place to discover insights about Jesus for yourself. I ask three questions. What does this story show you about Jesus? What does this story show you about people? And how does this apply to your life or speak to your heart? And I find starting groups through discovery and interaction are a simple way for 
anybody to start a group. Now that doesn't mean that's the only thing you do as the group grows, but it's a great starting place for any follower of Jesus to gather a group of their non-Christian friends or pre-Christian friends yeah. around a meal and some time to focus on discovering Jesus for ourselves. I find if we had more time, I could tell, tell you some really cool stories of how people who have never read a Bible before discovered for themselves um, who Jesus is and became followers of Jesus mm -hmm. from someone simply saying, I want to host a meal and have an interactive group for people yeah. to discover yeah. Jesus. And you know, you know, just for, for some of our believing friends that are out there watching, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, information in the Bible about how, how you learn. And one of the Bible verses that I like is over in Isaiah, and it says, he says, in that day, you don't need to, hmm. you don't need to have a teacher. And all my, te all my children will be taught of the Lord, and great will be their peace in their lives yeah. that day. And really what you're saying is the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to teach us anyway, right? Yeah. So you don't really have to be schooled and learned, not, not, not to take away from that, mm -hmm. but to, to, to say, hey, you can start something that's that simple. Yeah. You, and then let the Lord lead from there on yeah. out, right? right. I, Jesus is more willing to encounter yeah. Yeah. Um, people than, than we realize sometimes. Tell me, tell me how, 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 we got about, about two minutes left. How, how receptive are people with, to, to, to this teaching? Yeah. Because when, when, when you, you, you go from town to town, you said, what, you had <laughs> yeah. 42 states in the last four Eight, years? 18 five, months. 18, 18 months. months. 18 yeah. months. Wow. wow. Yeah. You're a real nomad, brother. I am a nomad. You're a this pioneer. Of life. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. How receptive are people to this message? Um, my message isn't start simple churches. My message is, uh, is Jesus. Okay, good. And, good. Uh, and that's I, where you start. Yeah, start with Jesus. But then in following Jesus, um, find ways to uh, bring the gospel to people in ways that I think Jesus would really like and make it more likely for people to encounter Jesus. And so simple churches are just a tool to help more people encounter Jesus. Hmm. In my experience, um, the people who uh, aren't yet following Jesus are really receptive to the gospel and forming groups that are discovering Jesus and then becoming a group that actually is their experience of what it means to be the church. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that really encourages me. I'm seeing more significant spiritual activity uh, these last few years than I've seen in a very long time. Yeah, People good. awakening that, to yeah. the fact that I can follow Jesus and I can reach my friends yeah. and I can baptize them and the power of the Holy Spirit is with them to go and obey what Jesus said to do. Yeah. Go make disciples, yeah. baptize Amen. them and teach them to obey what I've commanded you and we can all participate that in that everybody gets to play. Amen. Well thank you for continuing to support Christian television in your area. Programs like this are brought to you because people just like you support us not only prayerfully, but also financially. Thank you, and we'll see you again on another broadcast of Focus on Faith.